In the last lecture, we have proved the Holders and Minkowski's inequalities for n tuples of scalars. Today, we shall discuss Holders and Minkowski's inequalities for sequences of scalars, and we shall also discuss the n-dimensional Euclidean space. Now, the theorem is let x is equal to sequence xn and y is equal to sequence yn be in k where k is the field of complex numbers or the field of real numbers p is greater than 1 and 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 that is p and q are conjugate exponents such that summation mod xn whole to the power p n varies from 1 to infinity is finite and since summation mod y n whole to the power p n varies from 1 to infinity is also finite. If norm of uh, norm p of x is equal to summation mod x n whole to the power p n varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p. Here we are using this notation norm p notation for this summation because we have not shown that this is a norm. Then uh, we have to prove Holders and Minkowski's inequalities for sequences x and y. Let us prove the Holders inequality. If p is greater than 1, then by Holders inequality for n tuples of the scalars, we have proved earlier that summation mod x i y i i varies from 1 to n is less than or equal to summation mod x i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by p summation mod y i whole to the power q i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by q if we add infinitely many non-negative terms to both the series then we can write this um, right hand side is less than or equal to summation mod x i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p into summation y mod y i whole to the power q i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by q. Here as it is given that uh, this summation mod x i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity is less than infinity. Uh, we can also so show that summation mod y i whole to the power q i varies from 1 to infinity is also finite. As it is given that summation mod y i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity is finite and uh, so we can write summation mod y i whole to the power p divided by p minus 1 i varies from 1 to infinity is also finite because here we are taking smaller terms and uh, this implies that summation mod y i whole to the power q i varies from 1 to infinity is less than infinity because here, here p by p minus 1 is nothing but 1 minus 1 ma 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by p and 1 minus 1 by p is 1 by q and so here we have q and um, since the right hand side is finite so we can write that the left hand side is finite because it is less than the right hand side so we can write summation mod x i y i i varies from 1 to n is finite this is less than infinite this shows that the sequence of partial sums of the series summation mod x i y i i varies from 1 to infinity is bounded. As we know that sequence of partial sums of the series this the first term is mod x1 y1 the second term of the sequence is mod x1 y1 plus mod x2 y2 the third term is mod x1 y1 plus mod x2 y2 plus mod x3 y3 like this. So we have sequence of partial sums and 
uh, here this is the inner term of the partial sequence of partial sum and so uh, we can say that uh, any term of the sequence of partial sum uh, sums is finite and so we can say that this is a bounded mm, uh, this is a bounded sequence and from its definition it is clear that it is monotonically increasing because um, here successive in successive terms uh, we have uh, uh, added not negative terms and so sequence is uh, monotonically monotonically increasing it is bounded and so it is convergent if sequence of um, partial sums of the series is convergent so series is convergent that means sum of the series is finite and so we can write summation mod xi yi i varies from 1 to infinity is less than infinity because this is finite so uh, here uh, we are able to apply limit and tending to infinity in one so we get summation mod xi yi i varies from 1 to infinity is less than or equal to summation mod xi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p uh, into summation mod y i whole to the power q i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by q and by our notations we can write it as norm p of x into norm q of y so we have to forming uh, holders inequality for sequences of a scalar uh, now we shall prove Minkowski's inequality if p is greater than or equal to 1 then by Minkowski's inequality for n tuples of a scalars we have proved earlier that summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by p is less than or equal to summation mod xi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by p plus summation mod y i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by p and if we add infinitely many non-negative terms to each series then this uh, right hand side is less than or equal to summation mod x i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p plus summation mod y i whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p so and from the given condition uh, both uh, the terms are finite here in the right hand side and so left hand side that is summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by p is fine and so we can write summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to uh, n is um, fine as the sequence of partial sums of this series is bounded here um, uh, here we check that uh, sequence of partial sums of this series that is summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity sequence of partial sums is here first term is mod x1 plus y1 whole to the power p second term uh, of the sequence is mod x1 plus y1 whole to the power p plus mod x2 plus y2 whole to the power p like this so um, in this uh, sequence of partial sums each term is finite and so sequence is bounded and, and this is more bounded and this is also monotonically increasing and so sequence of partial sums is bounded and so we can say that the sequence is convergent because it is monotonically increasing and bounded and so uh, we can say that the series is convergent means its sum is finite so and we can say that 
uh, from this actually this uh, follows that summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p is finite this is finite and so in 2 we can apply limit and tending to infinity so we get summation mod xi plus yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p is less than or equal to summation mod xi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p plus summation uh, I, mod yi whole to the power p i varies from 1 to infinity whole to the power 1 by p and so we can write norm p of x plus y is less than or equal to norm p of x plus norm p of y in this way we have to mean cos t is inequality for sequences of scalars now we shall discuss uh, uh, Euclidean space r to the power n uh, now the theorem is this the collection r to the power n of all n tuples x is equal to xi1 xi2 up to xi n of real numbers is a Banach space with respect to norm norm 2 of x is equal to summation mod xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n whole to the power half let us prove this theorem uh, we know that r to the power n is a linear space over r with respect to the op vector, operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication as for x is equal to xi 1 xi 2 up to xi n y is equal to eta 1 eta 2 up to eta n x plus y is uh, defined as uh, xi 1 plus eta 1 xi 2 plus eta 2 up to xi n plus eta n and alpha x is defined as uh, alpha xi 1 alpha xi 2 up to alpha xi n next we show that the uh, here uh, norm norm 2 is actually this is a norm on r to the power n as mod xi i whole square is always greater than or equal to 0 mod of any real number is um, a non-negative number and so we can write summation of no, mod xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n is also a non-negative number and so if we take here square root of this then this will be a non-negative number actually here we always assume that square root is always um, positive uh, or, or we can say that uh, because uh, we know that square root may be positive or negative but here we consider only non-negative values so square root of this number is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and so we can write here norm 2 of x is always greater than or equal to 0 now the second condition norm 2 of x is equal to 0 if and only if summation mod xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n whole to the power 1 by 2 is equal to 0 if and only if here uh, summation mod xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n is equal to 0 and since uh, some of uh, terms some of uh, some um, um, terms is equal to 0 so each term must be equal to 0 so we can write because here each term is positive so if, if and only if mod of xi i whole square mm, is equal to 0 for every i is equal to 1 to 1 2 3 4 up to n uh, and here we know that if some pos term is positive or some term is negative then mm, summation um, is 0 then this does not imply that each term is 0 but, but here we know that um, because mod is always a non-negative number and so and their sum is equal to 0 so each term must be equal to 0 and so we have uh, xi i is equal to 0 for every i is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to n and so x is equal to um, uh, zero, um, xi1 is equal to 0, xi2 is equal to 0 up to xi n is equal to 0 means, e, means each tuple is 0 and so 
this is zero vector means null vector of r to the power n so we have proved that norm norm 2 of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is a zero vector x is a zero vector or null vector of r to the power n and by Minkowski's inequality for ordered intervals of a scalars and for p is equal to 2 we have norm 2 of x plus 2 is less than or equal to norm 2 of x plus norm 2 of y and so we can use this result directly and the fourth property for um, norm is for alpha n r for x is equal to xi1 xi2 x is xi n and r to the power n norm 2 of alpha x is equal to uh, because alpha x is alpha xi1 alpha xi2 up to alpha xi n and so we can write it uh, norm 2 uh, as uh, summation mod alpha xi i whole, whole square i very from 1 to n whole to the power half and since we know that mod alpha xi i is equal to mod alpha n to alpha xi uh, i and so we can write here summation i very from 1 to n mod alpha square uh, mod xi i square whole to the power half and since this um, mod alpha I square is common in each term and so we can uh, take it outside of the summation sign uh, or and so we can write here mod alpha into summation uh, mod xi i whole square i very from 1 to n whole to the power half and so we can write it as um, mod alpha into norm 2 of x this is norm and norm 2 of x and so we have proved all the properties of um, norm and so we can see that norm 2 is a norm on r to the power n in this way r to the power n is a norm linear space but we have to show that um, this is a Banach space and um, a Banach space a norm linear space uh, is a Banach space if it is also complete so we have to prove completeness of r to the power n so uh, completeness means we have to prove that every Cauchy sequence in r to the power n is um, convergent and this converges to a point of r to the power n so let xk be a Cauchy sequence in rn where xk is uh, xi 1 k xi 2 k to xi n k for every k in n so we can write every element of the Cauchy sequence here for k in n and uh, since each term of the sequence is, um, is, of the, uh, is in the form of n tuples so in this way we can write each term of the um, Cauchy sequence uh, since this uh, xk is a Cauchy sequence so for given epsilon greater than 0 uh, there exists some natural number n naught such that norm x m minus xp uh, is less than epsilon for all m and p greater than or equal to n naught and xm we know that uh, xm is an um, xi1 m xi2 m xi n m and xp is xi1 p xi2 p up to xi n p and so xm minus xp is uh, n tuple of the form xi1 m minus xi1 p and second term in that in, in this uh, uh, is xi2 m minus xi2 p like this so here we can write the norm is of xm minus xp as summation mod xi i m minus xi i p um, sorry mod of this whole square and i varies from 1 to n whole to the power half is less than epsilon for all m and p greater than or equal to n norm and uh, since here if we take square um, then we have 
summation mod xi i m minus xi i p uh, whole square i varies from 1 to n is less than epsilon square for all n greater than or equal to n naught and uh, since here uh, sum of n terms is less than epsilon square so each term is less than epsilon square so we can write this mod of xi i m minus xi i p whole square is less than epsilon square for every i is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to n and if we take a square root then we can write here mod of xi i m minus xi i p is less than epsilon for all m and p greater than or equal to n naught for all i is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to n so here for each i is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to n the sequence here xi i m i am very strong 1 to infinity is a Cauchy sequence in R. Here we have sequence as xi i m uh, sorry xi 1 xi i 1 xi i 2 xi i 3 like this and so this sequence is a Cauchy sequence in R and since we know that R is complete so for each i is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to n there exists some xi i in R because Cauchy sequence uh, is um, convergent and so uh, there is some point xi i in R such that xi i m converges to xi i i as n tending to infinity and since for each i we get um, xi i so we have xi1, xi2, xi n and so um, let x is equal to xi1 from a xi2 up to xi n and then clearly this belongs to r to the power m. We want to show that our sequence converges, sequence um, xn converges to this x. Applying limit p tending to infinity in 2 here, if we apply limit p tending to infinity then this will become uh, xi i and so we get here summation mod xi i to the power m xi i m minus xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n whole to the power half is less than epsilon for all m greater than or equal to n naught and uh, by our definition of uh, norm 2 we can write as this is norm 2 of x m minus x is less than epsilon for all m greater than or equal to n naught. It follows that the sequence x n converges to x. So uh, we can say that uh, this see, um, r to the power n with this norm norm 2 is complete. Because we have shown that the Cauchy sequence converges to a point of r to the power n. And so this is complete. Hence, r to the power n with norm 2 is a Banach space. Now, we also note that if we put n is equal to 2, then r to the power n is equal to r squared. And r squared, we know that this is uh, the set of complex numbers. And so c is complete. Now, there is uh, over for you all show that c to the power n is a Banach space with norm norm 2 of x is equal to um, summation uh, mod xi i whole square i varies from 1 to n whole to the power half where x is equal to xi 1 xi 2 xi n where xi i is a complex number in the earlier theorem um, uh, our xi i's are xi um, i's are real numbers but here um, xi i i's are complex for all i's 